Hey everybody, so um, I was asked to do a quick video on uh, how to use Collaborate Ultra and I want to throw in some tips I've learned um, teaching with it for a semester and a half now. So um, I want to highlight, I got a to-do list here, what tech um, I use, how to set things up in Blackboard, how to navigate uh, Collaborate Ultra, and some tips for uh, writing lessons. So um, I need a webcam and a microphone. Uh, there is a built-in webcam and microphone on, I think, every uh, school-issued laptop. Um, I am using an external microphone and webcam because it gets, gives me better quality and the college purchased, purchased that for me. Um, I've also found that uh, other devices like my office phone right here oftentimes do better with audio than the uh, onboard microphone in your laptop. Uh, your cell phone will also work. You can uh, call into your Collaborate Ultra session, put it on speakerphone, and oftentimes that's better audio quality than what you would have uh, using the onboard uh, microphone. The onboard webcam is fine. I haven't really had any issues with it. Um, I also I like to use multiple screens. So I have one screen that I can keep the class chat up, um, I can publish polls and I keep my email up and that kind of stuff. And the other screen I use as a screen share and that's where I share things like lecture notes. Um, I have a tablet. Uh, this is a Wacom tablet. I think this is the Generation 2 Wacom tablet. And um, to the best of my knowledge, I checked earlier today, uh, there is a stack of these in a shelf over in the graphic design department that we can check out. Now the issue with these is that you need to have a stylist to use with it. I have a uh, Wacom branded stylus that I, I borrowed from the graphic design department. They did not have as many styluses as they did tablets. Um, so I'm I put in an order today to order more tablets, so hopefully that will be an option soon. Uh, other than that, uh, I'll go over some of the software I use a little bit later on. Let's look at Blackboard. So I pulled up the math department repository page just as an example page. And let me grab, let me pull me over here. Uh, this is just an example page for how you do this. So you have to add in, you can go to tool links, down here is Blackboard Collaborate Ultra. You have to add that in. You can name it, I usually name it Collaborate Ultra. And you want to make it available to users. I, I usually put it at the bottom of my Blackboard page so it's pretty easy to find. Um, I would encourage you, if you're going to have your students use this, to shoot a little instructional video. That's, a, that's something that Quality Matters would encourage you to do as well. Or to demonstrate it in the classroom first if you're able to. Um, or uh, do some screenshots and put together a little instructional sheet or maybe just a Blackboard announcement that you send out showing that right here is where you're going to enter Collaborate Ultra. Students oftentimes need a little bit of help navigating Collaborate Ultra, particularly the first time. Um, something you can do, and I'll turn edit mode off so this looks a little bit more like what the students see. Okay. Um, right here, if they click on this, they can join the course room. You are also able to uh, create sessions. You can create weekly sessions. I've done that in the class I'm teaching right now. Uh, but I've had some confusion with students where they will click on uh, the session down here, excuse me, they'll click on up here instead of down here and they end up in the wrong place. Uh, so one remedy is is not to bother with sessions, just to message students out. I don't know if, I don't know if CTL would be happy with that recommendation, but uh, another thing that students have trouble finding, if you click on the menu button right here and you click recordings, it will show you the old recordings for the class. So if you record class, they can go here and they can watch them. Uh, there's a few settings that I want to highlight. So if I click this, 
Uh, guest access can be helpful. Down here you want to make sure people can share audio, video, and uh, you want to click allow recording downloads. And you want a moderate uh, moderator to be able to supervise private chats. Alright, then you click save. Uh, then let's look in the session. Um, I use this regularly, uh, so it didn't give me a tutorial. Usually there's a tutorial the first time you use this. Um, one of the first things you're going to want to do is pull this over. Um, I really don't have anything particularly queued up, but let's just do a quick I can get this to work right. There we go. Let's do a quick uh, screen share. So applications share screen. Let's go over to I think screen number three for me. There we go. And it will share it for me. So I have the webcam uh, slid over there in my to-do list for this video. Um, so the first box down here is chat. Uh, this is the main way that my students ask me questions. This is the main way, main way I correspond with students. Uh, the second lets you know um, who is in the classroom. Obviously for this video it's just me. Uh, but other, so that my students would be listed here. Um, and you can also from here see poll results, which can be helpful. Um, and then here you, there's a shared uh, whiteboard that you can click on. The problem I have with this is that it, um, it uh, students can write on it as well. So that ends up being counterproductive. Uh, I just did the application share. You can also share files. You can do polls with the class, which I think are uh, fun to do. Uh, you can do breakout groups, which I think is a cool feature, but it's not something I've used very much. And you have some settings over here. Uh, you have the ability to share the audio, which I'm, is now going to be in a loop, uh, and you can share your video from your webcam. Uh, and I point, mentioned to you, I um, just want to highlight this, uh, right here is the number you can call in, which is helpful for um, if I'm going to use separate audio, like if I'm going to use my cell phone, and if you're not completely confident with your internet connection, calling in from your cell phone for the audio and then connecting to the session uh, from your computer is a good idea because if something happens and you lose connection with your computer, you're still at least able to talk to your class. Um, you want to make sure that you always, let's take this down, you want to make sure that you always record your sessions. You have to hit the record button. I have forgotten to hit the record button multiple times. Um, but you want to hit the record button and then if there's anything that happens during the class that you don't want to record for some reason, maybe you're having students do um, presentations and you think it'd help them feel a little more comfortable if they weren't recorded. Uh, you can stop the recording at any time. Uh, it takes a little while for the recordings to get uploaded. And let me just show you some examples here from one of the classes that I'm teaching. Uh, you are able to go in and change the title of the recordings. And I like to make them titles that would be helpful if a student is going back and looking over something. So I wish they would let you I wish they would let me put in an outline of the video, but that's not an option. But you can edit the name and type in whatever you want. Uh, so I want to wrap up shop uh, just sharing a few tips I've found. Um, so there are different things and I know that different instructors have used different things for your uh, writing space. But um, I just like to use a Word document. I can write on it with my stylus pen and um, I can uh, type as well. It gives me both functions. 
Uh, so that's been helpful to me. And then sometimes I want to really draw on something and I use Microsoft Paint. So I use Word and Paint a lot in my classes. Um, I do a lot of screenshots. Um, I graph a lot of things with Desmos. I also have a digital calculator that I can pull up at any time. There we go. I drew a lake. Um, so I also have a digital calculator I can pull up and show to students and teach them how to press the buttons. So that's a quick crash, crash course. It's a 10 minute long video. Um, if there's anything I can do to help you uh, prepare for a course, uh, please reach out and let me know.